Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some fun. Okay, first I want to say this is the last of the talk over format, and uh, we will be going back to the old format where I talk while I'm doing it. So hang in here with me on this last one, and we will uh, be moving back into the other format soon. Um, so we're setting up our hold downs and why not do it in cardboard first because it's so much easier to work with get all our angles correct get the thing to work right and um, cut it out with scissors rather than uh, a uh, bandsaw or whatever it is that we're going to use yeah, and that's starting to look pretty good. The key is here to get it to move up and down smoothly. So we got the angles right. We got all of our radiuses correct. So let's just transfer it over into steel and uh, go from there. put a little center punch in that one little part there and we need three of these turns out that we needed four but uh, well, we just did three maybe at a later date we'd do the fourth one so we're on the bandsaw And, oh, it looks so easy here. But uh, I got this fast forwarded about 10 times. So uh, this, this part took forever. But, you know, didn't want to bore you with the details. We're getting there. So I'm just trim off the little excess pieces with my shear and when I bought that shear that little hold down thing I thought that was ridiculous but boy I have used that thing so much because it keeps the metal from popping up and folding under. You can see right there where I'm taking a nice long cut. So what I've done is I've welded all three of them together. And I'm not sure that I showed that. And now I'm coming in and, oh no, not welded. Yeah, clipped them together. And as I said, now I'm coming in and just squaring up all the edges and making them look pretty. Okay, and then once they're all squared up, I took them apart, and now I'm cleaning up each one separately, deburring them. And let's put them in the mill. We'll drill out that center hole, and may as well do them all at one time. And of course, a little center drill, and then come in with a believe it was at 5 sixteenths. Just 
straight down. And we've got our hole. And also we have our pivot. So now, um, I got the um, little rotary table and uh, we want to square it up, make sure it's all working properly and centered. Yeah, a little adjustment here and there. And we're centered. Um, 5 eighths pin, or I'm uh, not 5 eighths, uh, 5 sixteenths. And I just took a, a uh, deburring tool and ran it down there to give myself a center. You know, this is not a critical measurement, just to try to get that arch. Clamp it down. There we go. Get a little bit closer. Put in a 5 16 cutter. Bring it out to the proper position. A little fine tuning, and we're ready to rip. And I guess, you know, I could have drilled a hole in there, but once I got there, I just thought, well, I'll just work my way into it. There we go. And we just punch right through. Well, at some point, there it is. And kind of walk around this half circle. Well, not half, but portion of a circle. Come back do the other end and since I'm working with a 5 16 bit I'm going to go ahead and go back and and make the, the slot just a little bit bigger so we're taking the um, the rollers and we've got them all set up. Now we're just tacking things together, getting ourselves a reasonable line going and putting it in, in the water as soon as possible so that bearing doesn't get tweaked out. Okay, number two, straighten it out a little bit and whip it on. And number three. Looking good. So I wanted to get one edge, okay, two edges, squared up with the bearing so that I didn't have any trouble with the, uh, with getting the bearing correct and lined up with, with the plate that we just got through making. So that was pretty easy. And then I realized that the um, the one of the welds was going to be a, a little bit in the way, so just you know trim the weld back a little bit.
Uh, it probably affects the weld, but uh, it's not going to be... You know, I didn't take the entire weld off. I just create a little, little bit of extra room. Yeah, no big deal. Oh, I see. I used a bull nose. So I got a bit of a radius in there. And that's what the... So then I could get in fairly close and the well would be fine. So now we set the thing up and just do a quick tack. And then what the hell, just weld the hell out of it. Well, hell's bells, we're getting very, very close. All we have to do is put some screws in here and get these things to rotate up and down and uh, put a locking mechanism there and we're ready to try it out. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. It's all late in the afternoon. It's uh, uh, at the end of June, what is it, 23rd, 24th. Hotter than a pistol here in Northern California. So I'm bringing one of my buddies online here, a uh, brewski. First one I've had in about a month or two uh, since the coronavirus actually took over. And um, I don't know, for some reason I just didn't feel like drinking a beer. But now I do. So crack one open with me, click the bottles, and let's, let's have a brewski. In the meantime, while we're doing this, I think I'll take you into the art part of my studio or workshop and look at this recent piece that I've been working on. Okay, we walk past all of the machine tools into the fun part of my shop. Let me uh, get the door open. Oh, we'll show off a couple of pieces here and here. These pieces I did some years back when I was doing watercolor an old man and an old woman. Really, I did it to prove to myself that I could. Once I did it, I really didn't want to do faces anymore. <laughs> so, what the hell. So, uh, and on this side, um, this is Edwards Crossing, about a mile and a half from us. It's an old bridge made in, uh, at the turn of the 18th, 19th century. No, 18th century. Anyhow, 1909. And uh, uh, that's the river that flows below it. It's quite impressive, in the, especially in the summertime. We've got a little cabin piece that I did, oh, I don't know, probably 13, seven years ago. And a little babe piece here. You know, once again, just to prove to myself that I could. And once I did it, it was like, yeah, I don't want to do another one. So now we're kind of in the, in the process of, uh, of coming up with some wild stuff that uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about. And uh, here's a piece right here. You can kind of, and that piece is not huge, 15 by 30, 30 or so, uh, but it has good feel to it. And um, this piece back here, which took me weeks and weeks to do, uh, just because it was pretty complicated. 
And once I got it done, it was like, oh man, I really like that piece. And then uh, we got some other pieces, uh, older pieces um, here. These are more realistic. Uh, and I did a lot of that for oh, probably five or seven years. And then, you know, I just like kind of got bored with it. So now uh, what I'm working with is this gigantic piece here, eight feet tall, I think five feet wide. It's not done, but it's got some color and it feels pretty good. I'm fairly excited about it. Uh, I'll bring you up to date on a regular basis as it gets uh, closer to the finish. So that's the fun part. The uh, Fin du Monde is the other fun part and we're having a good time. Okay, it's the next day. Uh, the, uh, we need to drill the holes and tap them uh, for the uh, uh, hole downs. And that's what we're doing here. And once we get those drilled and tapped, we move on to, I'm not sure where we're going. Oh yeah, countersink. Because this edge here, or this face, is uh, where the wood slides. So the countersink has to be deep enough so that the bolt, flathead bolt, fits in there and is below the surface. There we go. Crank it down, test it out. Yeah, that's gonna work. Oh, maybe not. Okay, let's, let's go a little further. There we go. Now we do that to all three of them. Put a little flux in there. Bring them back down. And I just put a spacer in there. I just grabbed a nut just to kind of pull it down so that it's nice and snug and it's not going to go anywhere. A little more flux. And I did take and uh, and clean off this, the face of the bolt so that when I weld it, it's going to be nice clean metal on both sides. I guess I skipped the welding. Hmm. Well, I know it was there, but that's okay. We've got plenty of welding to do. Actually, it was silver solder. Do a little center punch just so I get it right. And <laughs> this is quite a story here. Um, I usually cut down my own trees. This tree had died, and it was uh, kind of in a dangerous place. And so uh, I usually cut my own trees down, but my wife was all, you know, she is like up in arms. And you're not going to cut any big trees down anymore. And I'm like, okay, fine, let's, you know, hire somebody. So she hires this clown, and he cuts the tree down, and it's supposed to go the other way. And he cuts it wrong. And you may have seen that. And the damn tree dropped right the only place it could have dropped where it didn't hurt anything was right in the middle of that uh, little spot between the road and the building. And lucky for me, it didn't touch the building. Okay, back to this. 
um, but just kind of cleaning things up a little bit of sanding work just to kind of make it smooth yeah looks pretty good so we'll come in put a little loctite on that that outer bolt or outer nut snug her down and we got ourselves an adjustable fence. All right, so we're here. We want this thing to fit, but the bearing isn't going to go over the top. So we've got to kind of, I mean, it's almost there. And especially if we put it on this way, it's like, oh man, just just a smidge so we're just gonna take a little notch out of the top here it's not gonna make any difference No, she went outside. I'm guessing she's down at the house somewhere. Okay, yeah. A little more deeper than I anticipated. Waiting for somebody to let her in. Okay, a little reassembly here and making sure everything is nice and snug and where it should be. All the slots and adjusters are set right. And I think we're just about ready to try this thing out. Let's see what it looks like. We'll take it outside. clean board in uh, cedar so on. one hell of a racket push our first board through
Now I took a second pass at it just to kind of clean up the, the surface. Yeah, looks pretty damn good. There's some riffles in there that I don't like, but not too uh, bad. Other than that, I think I think we're in pretty good shape. So, there we go. So far, this machine is functional and doing what I wanted it to do, um, minus a few issues.